What's your minimum specification? Now, along with these presentations, there will be prepared remarks. This is like the opening statement in a financial uh, disclosure like this. And we have Bob Swan's prepared remarks. Let's zoom in. Um, I'm only going to read some of this uh, where, where it's important. So, you know, we delivered solid third quarter revenue and profitability despite increasing COVID-driven headwinds attracting significant at affecting significant portions of our business. Led by strong consumer notebook demand and continued cloud growth, we generated $18.3 billion in revenue and delivered $1.11 in uh, earnings per share. We exceeded our top line expectation by $133 million and our bottom line expectation by 1%. Uh, one cent. One, I am incredibly proud of employees' performance. Our team has really come together as one Intel. Um, over the last couple of years, we have focused on three critical priorities, improving execution and strengthening our core business. Okay. Um, extending our reach to accelerate growth in the company and continuing to thoughtfully deploy your capital. Third quarter progress. First, improving our execution to strengthen our core business. This quarter, we launched 11th gen Intel Core Tiger Lake with Intel XE graphics. Uh, this is the world's best processor for thin and light notebooks. In real world, workloads versus competitor products, 2.7% uh, at 2.7x faster content creation, 20% faster office, 2x faster gaming plus streaming. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I'm excited to announce we now expect 100 Tiger Lake designs, uh, double what we expected in April. Um, Breakthrough architectural improvements in CPU, graphics, AI, and software combined with newest 10 nanometer superfin uh, delivers the largest single inch node performance improvement in our history. Um, yep, which is, I agree with that. Uh, company Tiger Lake, also we have Evo, um, Evo Designs. Uh, turning to our data center business, we and our customers are excited about the upcoming launch of our third gen Intel Xeon scalable product, Ice Lake. We're targeting qualification at the end of Q4 with volume ramp shortly after in Q1. Okay, so this is interesting. We were expecting Ice Lake uh, Xeon scalable by the end of the year. Um, it looks like Intel is only going to go through qualification with customers by the end of the year, and the actual volume ramp will be in Q1. Um, general availability will either probably be at the end of Q1 or therefore Q2. So um, they've it's completely slipped whatever 2020 um, or prior uh, deadline that they used to have on these products, um, which is going to be interesting because fourth gen Xeon Scalable, uh, Sapphire Rapids is also meant to be a 2020 product. And if, it, if this one's coming out, you know, end of Q1, beginning of Q2 for general availability, um, you got to wonder... Why would customers necessarily bother unless they're already really deeply invested in the isolate product or it will deeper discussion about how that, how Intel's ability to build Sapphire rapids and also execute that on time, um, may mean that, you know, ice lakes around for a while, but I mean, we can get into some of this, um, then Oracle announced they will leverage Ice Lake in cloud-based high-performing high-performance computing instances with Oracle Cloud Infrastructure. Um, how many people use Oracle Cloud Infrastructure? Um, combination of third-gen Intel Scalable and other improvements in X9 instance can drive 30% high-performance gains on current workloads. Um, yeah, okay, that's going to be interesting. Hmm. Uh, CPUs are foundational business, but also adding XPUs. Uh, great strides in graphics and our scaling architecture. Our first discrete GPU, DG1, is shipping now. So Iris XE Max is DG1. And will be in systems from multiple o OEMs later in Q4. Um, I think the Acer uh, one is definitely coming. I think they said China in October, so by the end of the month. Um, we also powered on our next generation GPU for client, DG2. Aha, okay, so DG2, next graphics is powered on. That's good. Based on our XE high performance gaming architecture, uh, the product will take our discrete graphic capability up the stack into the enthusiast segment. So if they're powering on DG2 now, we should probably expect it middle to end of next year. <clears throat> Maybe perhaps towards the end of next year. Um, come back Computex in, in, in June or perhaps a bit later. Beyond the CPU and GPU, customers tell us they want a diverse range of AI solutions, purpose-built XPUs, leverage standard programming. Uh, then we go over the acquisition of Habana Labs, um, proof of concepts with several major cloud providers in 
on Habana's training card, um, which I believe is still made at TSMC or Global Foundries. Um, and then Superfin, uh, Department of Defense or awarded second phase of its state of the art heterogeneous integration prototype program or ship. Um, software is essential. 15,000 software engineers, which is more employees than AMD, I want to say. Uh, uh, AMD wiki. Uh, how many employees does AMD have? 11,400. Okay, so Intel has more software engineers than AMD has employees total. And they're very proud of that. And, you know, that's also a good thing, optimizing software. Um, you know, NAMD, NAMD, uh, Molecular Dynamic Solution, uh, now AVX512 Accelerated, which is also a good thing. Um, and then uh, One API is on track. Um, spec 1.0, 1.0 of One API launched in the third quarter. And the full gold release by in the fourth quarter. Um Accelerate our growth, actively executing a diversified growth strategy, several multi-billion dollar businesses fueled by data and the rise of artificial intelligence, 5G networks, and the intelligent autonomous edge. Uh, create open Vino. Um, opportunities created by 5G, so 5G deployments. First fully virtualized end-to-end 5G data session, Intel's vast portfolio products, including Xeons, FPGAs, Ethernets, FlexRAN software reference architecture, and years of experience in virtualization. Um, mobile eye business, year-to-date, 29 new designs, 26 lifetime units. Um, announced collaborations with Geely, HD, and Willa. Um, I've heard of Geely in China. Um, and then finally... We are always mindful of our role in thoughtfully allocating capital. This week, we signed an agreement to sell SK Hynix, our NAND memory business, for $9 billion. We believe this is a fantastic win-win transaction that allows us to focus our energy on investment in differentiated technologies. Um, I, I'm, I'm always weirded out by these sorts of comments because it's like, we want a diversified product portfolio, but we're going to sell this business to focus on our core strengths. But diversified business portfolio, but core strengths, but diver- it's it's a cycle. Um, as part of this, uh, you may have read, um, Intel is retaining Optane and continue investing in Optane. Um, though Intel has never separated out its Optane revenues from its NAND revenues, so we don't know where whether Intel's profitable on Optane. Um, so we have also significantly improved supply for our customers. We have expanded our capacity by more than 25% in 2020 and currently have three high-volume fabs producing 10 nanometer to meet our customer demands. Um, okay, this is going to be an interesting point because I think this is quite different to what the PowerPoint presentation says, which we'll go through. Earlier this quarter, we also entered into accelerated share repurchase agreements to repurchase $10 billion in stock. Um so they sold a business for nine billion, and they're re they're buying back ten billion worth of stock. Okay, um, maybe good for financials. I'm not sure whether it it's necessarily that good for um, R and D and investment into next generation technologies, but we'll see. Um, guiding principles we use to deliver most value for our customers. Our overarching and most important priority is to deliver a predictable cadence of leadership products. Um, To say that Intel's product cadence is predictable in the last two, three years is an understatement. Is, yeah. Hmm. A few years ago, we decided that an architectural shift to dye disaggregation enabled by a differentiated advanced packaging would be a potent tool for employing the best technologies that we and the ecosystem can provide. This is them talking towards chiplets, but they don't want to mention the word chiplet because if somebody mentions the word chiplet with Intel, then the whole glue conversation happens again despite glue being a form of you know glue logic to connect yeah um yeah i think i've said my piece on that many times we also realized that delivering on this promise meant engaging in the ecosystem in a different way treating equipment and eda providers and third-party foundries not as suppliers but as strategic partners so we're competing with you but we also want to do business with you you know it's a whole like qualcomm apple thing and modems and power ICs and everything like that 
um, strategic partners that we can learn from and help us solve customer problems. Now that we have more flexibility in whether we make or buy uh, diureses for whatever reason, or whether we make for others. Whether we make for others. Um, there's been some rumors that Intel's going to move back into the foundry business, foundry game. Um I mean, their previous attempts at foundry business, as by foundry, I mean using their manufacturing facilities to build products for other customers. Um, it's, a, it's TSMC's business model, um, but Intel tried it once and never really got anywhere because Intel's really proud of its manufacturing facilities. So you have to be deep ingrained with your technology in order to be able to... Uh, you need to be deeply ingrained with Intel and its technology, and there has to be a lot of licensing agreements and basically very few companies signed up to it last time and those that did backed out when intel couldn't deliver 10 nanometer as far as i'm aware um you know so uh, many of our future products can no longer be described as manufactured inside or outside as being or as being a large core or small core product huh okay manufactured inside or outside now just to be clear intel's been a customer of tsmc for 10 15 years that's yeah um you know, whether it's uh, still making FPGAs from Altera or whether it's um, power ICs for various products, you know, they're manufactured at TSMC. So um, these products will take advantage of hybrid architectural approaches and the universe of IP, IP developed both inside and outside the walls of Intel. Um, hybrid architectural approaches is mainly a nod towards the packaging and being able to use different process nodes. Um, universe of IP developed both inside and outside the walls of Intel. It, if they're just referring to manufacturing and using TSMC's manufacturing expertise, fine. Whether it's actually deploying outside IP by a license or acquisition, that's, I don't know, a bit interesting. Um, Intel manufacturing... Uh, okay, as I look to the next several years of products, I'm excited about the products we have coming. We are now sampling our 2021 client CPU, Old Lake... Um, okay, so Old Lake coming 2021, and he's definitely a client CPU. Uh, no more details. Client either means desktop or it means laptop, so it could be either. Um, we'll be sampling our 2021 data center CPU Sapphire Rapids. Okay, so Sapphire Rapids definitely confirmed for 2021. They had they had they they had a contract with Aurora to sam to do it in 2020. Um. So the fact that it's sampling in fourth quarter, what, so a few units will go to Aurora? I, I wonder how much Intel has lost on that contract. And both will be, both will deliver significant capabilities enabled by our six pillars of information, including our enhanced superfin technology. So this is enhanced superfin is, um, originally what Intel would have called internally 10 plus 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 plus. And then they moved to 10 plus plus plus. And now it's enhanced superfin. Uh, enhanced superfin from now on. Um, we have another great lineup of products in 2022. And I'm increasingly confident in the leadership of our 2023 products. We deliver on either Intel 7 nanometer or external foundry or a combination of both. Um, there's a quote by Bob Swan. I'll reference later. Um, about this. Or, or maybe I'll bring it up now, actually. Um, Bob Swan in the Q and A said, um, when asked, you know, you'll have to make bets on whether you invest in seven nanometer equipment soon because of the lead time on how, if you want TSMC products, you have to order them, you know, 10, 12 months in advance or at least get the designs down and stuff. Uh, Bob Swan uh, said early 2021 is a time when we will have to make the determination whether we invest more in seven nanometer equipment or we add third party capacity. So Q1, if we see an uptake, an uptick, in Intel spending on equipment for foundries, then we can know that they're going more down their own seven nanometer route. Um, if the spend is less, then they're going to be shifting that more. I mean, but it says here, um, you know, I look forward to providing a further update on the January call. And then again, another diuresis after the full stop. I don't know what that is. Um, just a little context on the year. 2020 has been the most challenging year in my career. Um, so Bob Swan is a former finance guy. He's former CFO. Um, he's not an engineer. He's so when he's saying the most challenging, he obviously means the most 
financial challenging, I guess. Um, with a global pandemic, geopolitical tensions challenging business principles of globalization, the social unrest. Despite all of this, we'd expect to deliver the best year in our 52 year history. We plan to grow revenue by 1.8 billion, more than our January expectations, even as COVID has significantly impacted our business mix. Full year gross margin will be down two points versus January expectation. Um, <laughs> they say versus January expectation, but against Q3, um, we'll see. Primarily driven by acceleration of our 10 nanometer based products and a change in mixed products. Driven by acceleration of 10 nanometer based products. So 10 nanometers come, coming sooner than expected. But I thought it was being delayed and it has been delayed. What? I don't know. Um, we've maintained spending discipline even as we invest in our workforce, communities and supply chain to combat COVID. A decision we made to sell our NAND business will drive one or two points to non-gap gross margin accretion through the year. We are mindful of your capital and made decisions to increase shareholder value, excuse me, through our ASR and increase dividend improvement management of our Intel capital portfolio. The bit we don't usually hear about on the tech journalist side is Intel capital. I was invited to their event last year. It was amazing. I couldn't write it up because there, I went there on the way to a briefing for a much more important product. Um, so hopefully when we get traveling again and Intel Capital does that event again, I would like to do a deeper dive on Intel Capital. And now that I have a YouTube channel, uh, maybe we could do some videos. Uh, nine months since 2020, we're expecting to be a January free cash flow guide by 1.5 to 2 billion. Um, thank you for employees to deliver financial commitments and support our customers. Um, no mention of all the people they had to lay off in uh, data center marketing. 